An interesting starting place. Um, we have the architect of uh, a phrase for IK Multimedia that denotes the company's philosophy, which is musicians first, correct? Mm -hmm. Dave Kersner's here, and Dave um, and his brother are instrumental players. Your brother's managing managing director of the company, correct? Yeah, U.S. office. And, of the U.S. office. And one of the things I want to tell you that was really interesting for me is when we first started having a conversation about doing stuff together, mm -hmm. um, I always can gauge the reaction to, you know, after six years and 300 plus episodes, my guys have seen a lot of, you know, equipment, software, hardware, yeah. everybody, or a lot of them. And the reaction of my guys to your stuff was so immediate from both Dave and Chongor. Like, it just made me go, Whoa. So I'm not surprised that musicians first, what is, what is the philosophy behind that? What, what, what does that denote in you guys? Can well, in a world of specs, and, you know, and it's a tech world, yeah. you know, with um, all these uh, different interfaces and apps uh, for iOS, for the computer. Yeah. Um, the idea that we had, and I helped come up with this phrase, uh, was to think, you know what, put away your manuals, put away, just get right to it, plug and play, yeah. musicians first, thinking of the musician first, like if you're, uh, if you're traveling and you want yeah. something portable to take with you, yeah. that's the musician Think of the needs of a musician Absolutely. as opposed to somebody who's just going, how can it, you know, go to this yeah. stratosphere yeah. or whatever? It's like, well, are you going to do that? Yeah. Or are you going to put it in your laptop and go make and some music? It. Yeah, exactly. So. And you know what's interesting to me, Dave, is that um, I don't, I mean, I, I haven't, I've only dealt with the idle out micromonitors. You guys have dealt with a lot more mm -hmm. in Chongor. But I don't think that their philosophy has sacrificed any of the quality. Oh, absolutely not. Like, it's simple. Yeah. But it's still fire. Is that your sense? Their building's next door to the Ferrari plant. That, they, <laughs> exactly. that tells you their quality. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, yeah. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about different. Like, <clears throat> talk about some of the gear. What, what's what? What I love about what you guys do is that there is a musician's heart in the company. Mm -hmm. Obviously, musicians yeah. first. But you and your brother are musicians, and the company's got musicians. Well, actually, no, I'm the musician, oh. and he's the businessman. Doesn't yeah. play a note. So he was faking as the musician. <laughs> it was really you. This might be a good time for me to bring up a product that they made that I that I truly hate and hated. Which was what? <laughs> well, the T-Rex. Whenever I would get a session that had that on it, the the mastering plugin that they came out with, um, one of the early products. Yeah, the uh, first. It was really hard to beat that, mm. <clears throat> unless you were a mastering engineer, mm -hmm. in which case it was kind of hard to beat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and me and all my friends, as you know, all my friends are mixed engineers, sure. we would just bitch about that because we just got through with a piece of gear by TC Electronics that was the bane of our existence. And right. here comes a piece of software that everybody can afford. Right. And man, I remember cussing that thing out. So what any what any yeah, smart know, what any smart engineer would do, we all bought it. Right, yeah. Right, absolutely. That way we could take the client's settings and start from there mm -hmm. and then beat that, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I first realized the company uh, we all kinda heard the name. I mean they, they they have a good reputation. But that's when they first got on my radar and since then they they've just I own half those well I own all those plugins that mass select in the middle the gray one oh, that thing's a beast mm. I, I can sit here and point out all the stuff I use mm -hmm. oh I'm looking up in the right hand corner what's over there Dave what's your <laughs> what, what is generally the the product development cycle I'm sure it depends on the product but from mm. the idea the inception the beta the, to building the beta testing well. IK, first of all, it's uh, the main headquarters where the developers are is in Modena, Italy, right, right down the street from, from Ferrari. the Ferrari factory. Of which we, I think we need to go tour. Oh, that's yeah. Another, that's another sure. discussion. And where Free they make samples. balsamic vinegar as well. Oh, and Lamborghini's yeah. close by, too. Yeah, they so have two cars, good food, and good gear. And interestingly enough, there's a similar philosophy of craftsmanship and perfectionism. Yeah. You know, they really care about it. Uh, the developers, and they're also innovators. Uh, T-Rex, the, the first version you mentioned, came out in 1999, wow. before there was even plugins, and wow. before anybody had like modeled mm -hmm. analog compressors and EQs and gave them a face like True the gear. Groundbreaker. And then when, as soon as it was possible to do VSTs, mm -hmm. RTAS, different plugins, mm -hmm. IK was right on it, and then did T-Rex, and then over the years has developed it to be a system where you can put 
them in a chain inside the shell. Yep. Uh, the shell we call CS, which is custom shop. It's actually free. Mm. So you can download T-Rex mm -hmm. CS for free. Wow. And then you can add to it with this custom shop. It's sort of like, you know, you just buy a la carte. I want a model of a Poltec. I want a model of a Fairchild. Wow. You add it. Uh, and all the popular gear is modeled these days. Um, so the development process is basically, I mean, it depends on the product. Sure, I, right. I come from the sound development side for the mm. virtual instrument sample tank, mm. uh, for instance, based. Uh, but for the modeling, which IK was one of the first to do analog yeah. modeling. The guitar modeling. Amplitube, for instance, one. with mm. amps, uh, partnerships with Fender, officially, mm. Ampeg, Saldano, mm -hmm. Orange. Uh, there's a process that, you know, I, I couldn't speak as a developer myself, but I could tell you in sort of layman's terms, it's a combination of uh, mimicking the schematics, mm -hmm. doing measurements, audio measurements, and using your ears, uh -huh. and having the real thing there to A-B. Yeah. And I, I've seen some offices where it's all theoretical, and they, I'm like, but you have to have it there because sometimes there's just some je ne sais quoi, that's right. or whatever it is. <laughs> that's that, right. you know, so, and so that's why um, I think the products are very musician friendly, or you say the quality is there. It's very musical. Every, everything about it is very organic, mm -hmm. very like, you know, feels like the real mm -hmm. uh, hardware mm -hmm. in software. And that's probably what, well, first of all, I'm sure on the guitar side, for instance, that's what made uh, artists like Slash, which we have official Slash, yep. Hendrix Foundation. Wow. You know, companies like Fender yeah. be able to say, yes, you know, we, we will put our oh, yeah. name on this because That's it's amazing. that, you know, that says a lot. accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for, I can't speak for everyone, but for most of the people I know, when, when the guitar uh, plug-in came out, I didn't want to like it. I mean, <laughs> it, no matter how good it was, I wasn't mm -hmm. going to like it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that way anymore. It used to be early on in the in the software process in the in the late '90s. You just didn't want to give up your Marshall. You just didn't want to give up that kind of control. But it, it changed everything also. And a lot of the products you were coming out with, uh, even to this day, how how does the company react to the resistance part of it? Do you, do you, do the designers think, okay, how? What are the things that these guys are going to bitch about the most? Let me fix those first. Or how do? Or they just try to make a great product and then seduce us and win us over naturally, you know? I think that. Um, I mean, essentially, you know, there's going to be, well, and there has been a paradigm shift, you know, essentially these new tools, and it's like, well, how do you use it? And what happens is you start to realize, let's say as an engineer, mm -hmm. um, hey, you know, nothing beats my uh, Marshall yeah. and my Fairchild in the rack. It's like, well, but how many Fairchilds do you have? Right. One? Like, well, you could put one on every channel, a model of a Fairchild, mm -hmm. or you could put a Poltec on every channel. Um, you know, your Marshall, it's like, okay, if you record the Marshall, I mean, it could sound great with a 57 or, sure. or U67 or whatever you have. But um, I tend to, because I'm an engineer myself, mm -hmm. record, even if I, I like recording amps, I have an old Vox AC30 and, mm -hmm. you know, some mm -hmm. staple pieces in my studio. But I'll record, I'll split it off, and I'll do a dry signal just in case. I'm like, you yeah, know, I think that's want to change it. it. And when it comes to, like, reamping, with Amplitude, yeah. it's so fast and you have so many options that as an engineer, having something like Amplitude is amazing because you can take a track that maybe, you know, the guy's amp didn't sound that good or there was bleed in the mic or something wrong mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what, let me take this DI signal and mm -hmm. just yeah. have my way with yeah, absolutely. it. <laughs> absolutely. Well, also too, Dave, and you guys listen up. Um, I'm, I'm kind of over this comparing things I, I I think now the the a prudent and a and a and a smart person doesn't look at a new piece of software and go, let me compare it to what it's emulating right. uh, or synthesizing or trying to be like. And I think I think <clears throat> we're over that now. That uh, this this A B shit is just tiring and boring now. Right. You use Amplitude for Amplitude. If you've got a Marshall, use it. Sure. And, and uh, I've got some friends. I'm not gonna mention names, but. But they, they blend in a little bit of Amplitude with sure. every amp known to man, you know? And um, um, it's a different world. Uh, the, the, the efforts to try and make the analog side of our profession have mythological and godlike status is over. And, um, and, and, and now we're coming to a point where if you got some analog gear, use it. If you don't, use this. If you got 
whatever you want to use, you can use. Use all 52 cards in the deck. Why, why, why short change yourself and just using plugins or just using analog? And there's affordable analog gear now that's just amazing. But um, everybody I know that's in the box says the same thing eventually, man. I'm just trying to get more in the box. I hate I hate documenting all this stuff. I hate yeah, total recall. The, the part of being in the box is being able to move quickly, mm -hmm. and and um, you know I, I'm at, I'm at a point now where I'm I'm rethinking some things. I still <laughs> got about 20 pieces of gear I like to use, and I own them. But um, I think looking at at software as something you compare to the hardware that, that's like comparing to your mama's cooking nobody's going to win that battle so get your head straight mm -hmm. and and then look at them as individual things they're not just because it has a fender logo on it don't expect it to sound like a fender expect it to sound better yeah could sound why better. not do so you, do you guys it seems to me that that you guys are really specific about <clears throat> the price point also being musicians first too. Of course, yeah. Is that part of the philosophy of I came up with? Yeah, that? well, I mean, there's there's essentially two sides to the company now. We started off mainly as a pro audio oriented company mm -hmm. with uh, plugins for mm -hmm. Pro Tools and Cubase yep. and Logic. And then with the explosion um, of you know iOS devices and everything else, we became extremely popular you know, dudes, <laughs> with right? iRig yeah. and interfaces, keyboards, uh, microphones, uh, of course, uh, speakers, monitors, yes, you know, yes, and now and uh, and the guitar input was probably our, our biggest product, mm -hmm. iRig, and the various forms of iRig yep. um, with Amplitude as an app, and um, so this is and those are all like sort of ninety nine dollars and below. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get them at the Apple Store, even Amazing. not just Guitar Center and yeah. Target, and you can get them a lot of different places. Yep. So, but it's really interesting how yet the quality of the the craftsmanship and the coding and and everything is for the pros, mm -hmm. and that's that's the mentality, not yeah. something cheap just to be cheap. It's right. cheap because, let's say, there's yeah, a way to make it at all. with you know this feature set and at, at this price right. as an entry level, you know, and if you want it to be more, there's there's different tiers. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's musician friendly pricing, mm -hmm. uh, very fair mm -hmm. pricing. It's mm -hmm. uh, you know very affordable. You know, it's one of those things like I was mentioning the custom shop. Each of the main flagship uh, software products, mm -hmm. uh, Amplitude for guitar, mm -hmm. um, Sample Tank for keyboard players and songwriters, um, and you know, producers if you if you play mm -hmm. as sequencing, and then t rax for the engineer producer. Uh, each of them has a CS free version mm -hmm. that you can download. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then and it works completely, so yeah. it's not like a timed out demo. Some people might not understand the CS. Explain that. Well, custom shop means that CS stands for custom yep. shop. You download it for free, and it's essentially uh, comes with a few of the models inside it just for free that you mm -hmm. can use. I mean, it's totally you might as well have that. Mm -hmm. And then um, you have the option to buy either individual models of effects mm -hmm. or samples and things, mm -hmm. uh, like some of the samples I do for Sample Tank or Neil Peart drums. Mm -hmm. I produced that. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan Parsons piano, mm -hmm. you know, with Alan, and we mm -hmm. recorded a piano like Dark Side of the Moon mm -hmm. style. So these are the things you can add, wow. you know, to your setup, and then you can buy bundles of them, or they go on sale and different things. So there, it's always very very musician friendly, inviting to very say, cool. you know, depending on your budget, you can just, you know, max it or you can do it over time and collect. Yeah. It's like collecting. People like to collect. I collect yep. stomp boxes and compressive. Yeah, it's right. Sure, we man. love that stuff. And I don't stop just because I have it in software. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, to me, it's fun and more affordable for some people as well. Because one of my stomp boxes, I think, costs like, you know. Right. Two thousand dollars or something <laughs> for a Univive sure, or whatever, right, exactly. and you can just download the Univive for five bucks. Unbelievable. What are the original tube screamers going for now? Like the eight hundred eight tube screamer? Yeah, probably. Not, I don't know, uh, five hundred bucks or something crazy like that. I think they're going for thousands. Really? After Stevie Ray Vaughan. Right, right. The, the so look, oh, oh, sorry. Oh no, I was going to say the, the company's how big? About. Mm. Well, there's uh, my brother runs the U.S. office. Right. Uh, we just. Uh, bought a new building and there's probably about 50 people in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's uh, the main headquarters is in, in Modena, Italy. Right, right. Uh, we have a station in uh, Asia and then in the UK. Wow. Uh, so, I mean, globally, I mean, it's a pretty big company. Mm -hmm. And also because we've done, for, for an MI company, because we've partnered up with Apple yeah. and they've had us in the Super Bowl ad, you know, because it's Isn't fun. It it's fun to be able to plug a guitar into your iPad and rock out. Yeah, so, sure. you know, we're, we're sort of a hip so cool. uh, company for them. And we're in the Apple store and stuff. So it's, uh, it's 
pretty large for it for an MI yeah, company. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, but it, but it speaks to you can't get that large or get that kind of adoption and integration unless the stuff is good. Oh yeah. Right. right? I mean, the and stuff, first the stuff has to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if you just said ten years ago, man, desktops are going to be obsolete. Everything's going to be a laptop. They have the same processing power and perhaps more than an average desktop. And ten years from now, we're probably going to be saying that about tablets. And mm. IK has been in the forefront of understanding that shift in technology. And the new iPad Pro Two is going to change the world. What? Two questions. Part A: What's your commitment to the to the PC world in terms of of all of these technologies? Because most of the world uses PCs mm -hmm. outside of America. And 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 what can we expect? Uh, in terms of the iOS device in the future? Well, first of all... Am I right? I think so, absolutely. I, I have to say uh, the CEO of IQ Multimedia, Enrico Iori, is uh, a genius visionary. Mm. He immediately looked at the iOS when it came out and thought there music applications and was mm -hmm. the first to the do... The MIDI's getting really good, too, now. I mean, yeah. it's like... And, of course, but, you know, seeing it back then and then being, you know, a leader in it, uh, in yeah. iOS, that okay. world, when let's say other uh, pro audio companies, other uh, software manufacturers were looking at it as like, oh, it's a toy, or right. oh, what do you have to sell it for? $10? Right. A right. dollar? Right. You know, 99 cents? What's this world? No, right. no, we, you know, and so, but by doing scalable products of different features, uh, but you know, give, packing in a lot of value into an iOS, mm -hmm. um, it's sort of, there's just like a convergence going al uh, along in sync, it seems, with uh, Macs, Apple, iOS devices. It seemed to be like, is the tablet sort of coming to the computer? Yeah. Is the computer coming? Is it eventually yeah. going to be one thing we can, you know, and I think already, actually speaking of PC, Dave, is uh, there's, uh, if I don't want to get one, it's a tablet that's a PC. So it's like, a, like similar to an iPad, yeah. but it runs Windows. So you can run our full versions of our plugins, nice. and some people have been doing the, that live. The iPad Pro 2 is going to be that same thing. iPad it's, Pro it's, 2. Um, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I know. It's exciting, and, and, and it's cool how the technologies meet because there's certain things you can do with a touch screen that are also musical. Um, exactly. We also make um, accessories, and very popular accessories, like the iClip, which uh, mm. a lot of musicians use to be able to take your iPad and clip it to a mic stand, a mic stand. for your lyrics. I, at the last award show, I you watched know, that. Yeah, it's like I, that. Literally, I was like, oh, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Your history too now, and, and part of the musician's first thing comes mm -hmm. from the fan standpoint, you were a musician and an engineer yeah. and all that kind of stuff. You have lived this way and worked with, you know, kind of Alan Parsons, Phil Collins' son, mm -hmm. on and on and on. Trace, trace the journey. What what? Did you just say, look, I want to meet chicks, I'm going to learn how to play no, guitar? No, no, no. How did this, oh, that's not a bad motivation, by the way. But anyways, no, so. never that motivation for me. I always, I, I literally, since I was about 14 years old, I, in high school, I was, instead of like going around vandalizing and getting drunk, whatever, I had my little Tascam 4-track rack, yeah. which sounded pretty decent, and I, I played producer, and I'd be like, can you do that take again to like my friend who's oh, a drummer? He'd be like, who made you the producer? I'm like, well, I have the <laughs> gear. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I know how to use this yeah. stuff. So I was just, I always wanted to make records and looked up to bands. Ironically, one of my favorite bands was Genesis. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually I worked with them, Amazing. and they use our software. They all use IQ Multimedia software. Do they really? Oh, and, how cool and, is and my that? samples. Genesis. And that's how I met Phil Collins' son, Simon Collins. Mm -hmm. I created a band with him called Sound of Contact. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've done other things since then. I, I mean, before then, I played in a band with Kevin Gilbert, yep. who uh, Tim Pierce played with yep. as well, yep. and yep. Uh, a lot of those guys when I lived in L.A. So I've just, you know, I've always been a musician myself and, and, and recording and, and producing. Uh, and then when I did sample libraries, it was like have a field day with taking, uh, you know, for the first time we had Nick Mason from Pink Floyd mm. and Alan Parsons work together since Dark Side of the wow. Moon with an EMI TG12345 console. Wow. Or I had another project where it was me and Ken Scott, who had recorded the Beatles sure, and David course. Bowie. And what we did is we had Woody Woodman see from Bowie's band, mm -hmm. Bob Siebenberg from Supertramp, recreate the sound with the original Trident A-Range board. I mean, wow. not a Trident, because it's gone, but we would find the last remaining Trident consoles, oh a, Trident A-Ranges, and used all the same mics and everything and recreated the drum sound. So I, I'm a real, Studio buff, you know, history buff. I love all the records you guys make. Yeah. You know, I'm just a big yeah. fan of it. 
and it's Wait really minute, I'm cool. Not I'm not. A, I'm not history. I'm. No, you're you're ongoing. No, no, you're, you're a legend. You said you're buff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I could relate to I the like... chicks and guitar thing, though. Well, yeah. Well, look, that was look, your look at this face. You need help. <laughs> <laughs> but but it seems to me that the diversity of that path and journey, and and that passion, is somehow infused in the company because it seems to go into the product as well. Is is that fair? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly can't. I have my influence, sure. You know, almost as a as a, a third party because I, I develop sounds. I've actually developed sounds over the years for Roland, for for Elisa's, uh -huh. for other companies, and everything too. So my passion is recording sounds mm -hmm. and then using them myself as a musician. As a mm -hmm. key, I'm mainly a keyboard player. Sure. Uh, but uh, on the other, but you know, I've I've always been a. a you know, bugging them like you gotta model this thing, you gotta model right, the, right, the right. boss CE one, man. Not, that is right. the best course. Yeah, yeah. You know, things like that. And then of course, <laughs> you know, and everyone else at the company has their passion as well. Yeah. Uh, and so all of that is very. Uh, I mean, it's like a cliche when they say, you know, made by musicians for musicians. Mm -hmm. But it really is that. It, it, it's like, you know, Enrico, the the owner is uh, is a, a guitar player himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know, he came up with like, for instance, he loves this story. There's a new product called I, I Rig Acoustic Stage, mm -hmm. right? Which is a really unique product because it, it looks like a pickup and it acts like a pickup, but it's a microphone. Mm. And the reason he thought of it, he was watching Paco De Lucia mm -hmm. play, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a recording of it, whatever, and he noticed there's this weird little Sony mic, one of those little <laughs> mic, he, he said, what a great that. idea. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, to make it like a pickup, but it's a microphone. Uh, and then you can mix in the yeah, pickup. It's like a lavalier mic? Yeah, uh. like a little lavalier mic, but, but design. And then wow. there's a little bit of modeling in the box to kind of make up for any sort of EQ and this and that. Uh, and that's that product. So, I mean, very sort of just looking mm -hmm. at musicians and mm -hmm. thinking like, what would be practical? Mm -hmm. You know, because of course, if you mic a guitar, you, you have to stay right there. You can't right. move around. Can't move right. So yeah. this uh, makes complete sense. Uh, I have, I'm gonna say something that has no bearing on anything. I heard something that was really interesting, like like the, some of the sample packs that you have, a lot of people don't think of them this way, and I didn't until it was recently brought to my attention, but sometimes when you sing something yourself and you're recording yourself, you don't have the same objectivity as when you hear somebody else singing. Right. So, right. so all my best guitar parts end up on the erase head because I can't produce myself. I think I can always do better. Right, right. But when somebody produces me, they get more out of me than I can. And when I produce somebody else, I'm pretty doggone good. So if you take a loop and start with a loop, you're starting with something that your taste has said, this is really good. Mm -hmm. And so you're not starting from scratch. If you start from scratch, you might do something good, you might not do something good, you won't ever know. But if you if you apply that same logic to starting with a known loop yeah. that you mm -hmm. like, and then build on top of that, that's the same thing as, as, as somebody like Max Martin getting a track from a, an employee and starting with that, mm -hmm. he, can, he can start with something he likes and builds on that. So right. the concept of loops, should be thought of not just as 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 cheating, but as a as a creative tool that's really really mm -hmm. really useful. And and so particularly in some types of music, people don't talk about that in terms of the loop. Because I know a lot of people that start with a loop, get the song going, and then take the loop out. Sure, you can do that too. And, Why not? And and, and 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 have you ever thought about that? I do. And actually, oh, it's well, interesting. I uh, you know this. It doesn't really matter because if you're the most important thing to me is the song. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so how you get there, you know, if it inspires you or it's quick, you know, sometimes just sitting there like like coming up with something or, or you know, if it's a groove from, mm -hmm. you know, a Billy Cobham, mm -hmm. he's probably going to play a groove. We have a library with him that you're not going to come up with. Right. But it might inspire you to play something. Absolutely. And the same thing, we have a product called Miroslav Philharmonic, which I helped mm -hmm. uh, develop. Mm -hmm. And it's an orchestra. And I gave it to, uh, I turned Tony Banks from Genesis onto this, mm -hmm. and he's doing oh, wow. classical records, oh, right? How cool is and that? so he's using a real orchestra, but he needed something to mock it up with and to wow. kind of hear it with. So he used it, and then he, then he sent me a thank you, and he sent me the record, and I was like, that is so Very cool. cool man. One of my big records, I'm not gonna name names because I might get in trouble, but it was a big record in the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had, I had live strings and I had synth strings. And I, I, I didn't use the live strings, I used the synth wow. strings because the live strings made it sound kind of old and tired. Right, 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 right. And I used, I used the live strings for the intro, which made the listener think they were still hearing live strings in the song, but huh. live strings um, tend to be played late and lazy and... Casey and JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call um, you out. I take the fifth. 
No, it's okay. It's Death. Right. Yeah. <laughs> What's that Chappelle that, skit? That record. Oh, Michael Jackson that skit. Killed me. Yeah. But a lot of people blend the two as yeah. well. Yeah. To try, you know, let's say I you like had a, a smaller orchestra, you couldn't really afford a yeah. big one, but you wanted to sound like the London Symphony, Absolutely. you know, <laughs> and you it. just, yeah. Yeah. Why not? I think we're really in the beginning of the golden age, a new golden age of recording. You know, mm -hmm. when you look at the history of recording, and you should be looking at the history of recording so you know the future. Uh, there's been several big leaps, and and we'll stay on a plateau for a while, and then a big leap. And I think we're in that right now. Well, to, to take that point, it really feels that way to me. How do you guys see the future? What's the focus moving forward for the company? Well, you know, I I, uh, I can speak for myself sure. in saying that it, it's interesting what you say, Dave, because uh, you know some of us were around when there was tape. Yeah. And mix, you know, and, yeah. and, and that you had to pay to go to the studio and you oh. really valued that time. Right. Right. And right. now you can get GarageBand for free. You can get, you know, all these T-Rex CS for free, all these tools for free. So yeah. really, uh, and of course you can sell it now. You don't even need a record label uh -huh. per se. You can put it on, anyone can put their album on iTunes, mm -hmm. for yeah. instance, mm -hmm. or whatever, right. Amazon. So now it, for this to happen, artists need to value these tools to understand them. They watch your mm -hmm. show, for instance, mm -hmm. they learn about them, they yeah. really get to, you know, not just uh, use it and slap something together, but really craft something yeah. and learn the skills. There's all kinds of slap stuff together too. Yeah. yeah. Either way, if they're being creative yeah. and the you output is somewhere. appealing to people, right. um, then I think it could be like a renaissance of independent That's music. What feels like to me. I think, I think Using so these too. tools are yeah. so readily available. Plus, um, the UFO people, say that because there's an infinite number of possibilities for life on another planet, there have to be aliens. And, and, and there's an infinite number of people making records right now so that- it, Some of have, them are aliens. We have to have the best music <laughs> ever being star. made is being made now. The problem is by the same mathematical formula, the worst music that's ever been made is being made now. And at a time when we need gatekeepers like, like the labels were not, weren't as bad as we thought they were to keep some of the bad stuff out, um, it is a golden age of, of, of accessibility. If, if you've got the ambition, you can create some great, I, I, got, I know people that don't know how to play an instrument that create some incredible music. And, I, and I'm a person that spent a lot of hours woodshedding on, on my musical chops. And if I could have done that in, a, in an afternoon and had not have to spend, years of my life practicing piano and guitar, mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd be so much happier. So I, that's the future is music is more important than the tools used to create it. Mm -hmm. Much like a house, who cares what, what to, if it was a screwdriver or a saw or an electric drill or whatever. We're, yeah. we're fans of the, uh, thank you for that, Dave. You're welcome. Okay, pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> West Side. Bes besides being fans of some of the other stuff, we got a real good dose of the iLab micro monitor. Yeah. The, they are just insane. We've, we've been running the sweepstakes, mm -hmm. it's been doing really well and awarding stuff. And um, what's amazing to me is that the musician first ethos are in those, yeah. but a guy like you can mix with them. A guy like me can just plug them up, yeah. plug them in, go, yeah. put them in a rack and go. Yeah. Um, as the future comes to us, right? Because we've been talking about Facebook and all these other kinds of things right. and all this evolution of music. Um, do you feel that this this time is energizing for where we're going? Do you play cautious? Do your metrics show positive growth? Is it is it a good time for the music space? And does the music space now evolve more than just making records and making music? Because we see it as a hybrid kind of space. Yeah, you're, great question. You're in all the arts. You're in, you're where sound is, and sound right. goes lots of different places. Is that fair? Well, from a from a company perspective, yeah. making products like iLoud Micro Monitor, um, it's exciting because we've found a niche somewhere in between the smallest studio reference monitor yeah. for that real world test. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Oratones used to be, mm -hmm. and then you know, like that. So you've got your whatever barefoots and your your big expensive, uh, and then you know your NS10s, and then this. Yeah, yeah. And you sort of check it between there, just make sure you know, right? Right. So that's what's great for uh, a lot of engineers that are making records. Yeah. Uh, but then there's you, 
uh, wanting to listen to, I mean, they're, they're computer speakers. They're as small as computer speakers. Absolutely. They have Bluetooth. Absolutely. They have, you know, um, there's even little things like, let's say, I mean, I don't know how many studio monitors have Bluetooth, probably none of them. Right, right. But uh, I was just doing a session uh, with them portably in my in my uh, hotel room because yeah, I'm yeah. traveling right now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but you know I had my, my mixer hooked up to it and everything. And I'm like no no like this. And normally I would I have my iPhone like literally seconds. I Bluetoothed into the speaker without even connecting anything, without disconnecting anything. I was wow. like oh wow. So musicians That's first cool thinking of workflow, thinking of uses. Yep. And the other thing is you know when I'm traveling and you ever notice like you try to watch a movie mm -hmm. and the laptop speakers aren't loud enough. Oh, God. <laughs> these are great. You just put them there. And and you have your own yeah. little movie theater. Oh, funny, story. <laughs> funny story about these babies. Um, so my friend Bob comes by and I said, man, how you like your, how you like your little eyelids? I said, man, I love them. I said, how you, how you working? He said, well, I got them on my desk. I said, oh, that's cool. And I roll off a little low end. I'm like, me too. <laughs> like, am I the only one that gets a gut joke here? Like, mm -hmm. like, like, like a speaker this big rolling off low end. Right. But a speaker like, like this. Nice to have it to roll off. And you're rolling off low end. What does that say about this bad little boy? It's yeah. got some serious low end. Yeah. And, 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 really and, and you can roll it off, you know? So it's like, uh, I, I found that incredibly funny. Like, oh, yeah. Like, a, like there's a joke about, about, the, about the ant ro walk, floating down the river on his back yelling, raise the drawbridge. That's like this little speaker here. And if you can make that correlation, um, I will find that just to be a feat of linguistic agility, <laughs> bar none. Well, you get, you get it, right? He's uh, lying no. on his back with an erection, yelling, raise the drawbridge. Ah, okay, great. And a little ant. Into the eye loud, a like, little ant that you have it. to roll the low yeah, end off. Just, That's we just, incredible. We, we just wanted to pull it together for the audience. I guess, it, I guess uh, uh, my, gir my GERD, my nerd and geek side is showing. Hey, a nerd and a geek yeah. would be a GERD. Yeah. Now, yeah. here's uh, where the, right, which is uh, actually, is, I love those it's things. It's tied into acid reflux. Oh. There it is. So, just so, so you know that. It, there's an acronym for that. Now, oh, that's right. Let's, that's right. Right? Let's yeah. go to, now let's go to batter's box and see what you... Oh. Uh, all right. So Dave K is up against Dave P. Um, no contest. I'm going I'm to I'm put my faith over here to the left because the left <laughs> generally always wins. Okay. Um, all right. So we know I'm the gonna, correlation. I'm going to review the rules quickly because okay. I'm going to go hard on this one. Here. All right. Cool. Review quickly. So what we're going to do this time is I'm going to say a, a particular concept or instrument or something, and you tell me what IK Multimeter product is best for it oh. quickly. Okay. Guitar. Right. Amplitude. Ooh. Synth. Uh, Syntronic, which is coming out. Ooh. Kick. Uh, T-Rex. He's got bat speed. Snare. T-Rex. From the room. Oh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Sample pack. Uh, expansion tank. Ooh. Vocals. Uh, T-Rex, uh, let's say LA-2A model. Ooh. White 2A, it's called. Mm -hmm. Mastering. There's some mastering console. Yeah, and our boy. Sure. Strings. Miroslav Philharmonic, too. Ooh. IOS. iRig. Oh, that's so boring. Take, take one <laughs> off of that. Everybody, no knows, everybody knows that's the best. OK. This is, this is going to be a test. OK. Studio monitors. I loud micro monitor. That's easy. Did I win? Two, what no, do I win? Hours. Do I win a pair? Two hours. Everybody knows they're great. <laughs> well, now, you have to ask the studio question. If something burned down, what would it be? You know what? I was thinking about that. Oh. Um, if you had to go to the owner of IK Multimedia and ask him to eliminate one product from the product line, what would it be? <laughs> the eye ring. <laughs> <laughs> which was eliminated. Was it, it was a cool product. I mean, in the sense, do? it was like a theremin. It was like a ring you could put on, and you could just sort of, you know, woo, uh, woo. But um, it just, uh, it, all it was really is was three dots on a ring. Oh. And it was clever because the, the camera will look at those three dots, right. and you can use it as a controller. Right. But nobody nobody really got it. I mean, just, uh, you yeah. know, like, we give out one. party favors. Everyone oh, wants one. Right. Every time I mention it, I got one. one. Everybody wants Maybe one. we'll bring it back. That's funny. <laughs> the great part about our business is that um, sometimes form factor meets passion meets you know ability, and you get to 
you know, do what you love as a musician, but mm -hmm. also also share it with other people, which is part of the journey we all get to do. Yeah, I think that's what you get to do with mixing, and that's what you get to do with the show, yeah. and that's what we get to do with. It's what you wake product. up to do. Um, and and then what you guys, you know, I wish you could be part of this. Whenever we meet over sushi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a wow. good trend. Like, the sign is good. Wow. And, and we did some serious sushi. Thanks oh, to yeah. Multimedia. Man. The Florida boy stepped up. We sushied up. I mean, just having Chongor sushi. Chiba stock doubled that day. Ch Chiba <laughs> stock did. And Chongor. Thanks again, man. Uh, oh, you're so, welcome. Oh, we got more to do. Because um, I, I, I ain't going to lie. Well, it's just up the street. You're very yeah, lucky. Yeah, no, it's close. It's I ain't going to lie. When I mean, was free, I ate way more than I should have. Thanks to IK what, and Dave. And, and what we think is um, that this is a really cool match yeah and we got stuff to do and you know Definitely. it's early on but we got there's amplified miami and a bunch of other stuff that we're yeah. playing around with um excited about it. other things as well yeah too. um dp take us home it's been a good one let's say <laughs> your gang thing is because <laughs> it's so non-gang <laughs> uh that's what makes it funny um you know technology is a wonderful thing and um it sure seems like the pace isn't as steady as we thought. Uh, we always knew it's somewhat logarithmic and doubles and doubles and doubles. And, and uh, a good way to keep up with this is to go to a lot of the manufacturers' websites, be, be judicious in, in where you go, and, and check out the technology and master it before it comes out and, and be comfortable with it because the biggest impediment to understanding technology is fear. And there's nothing to fear. The stuff's really simple, but you got to kind of put a little time in at the beginning of a, of a trend and, and catch them and then grow with it. And uh, there's no better time to get your feet wet right now. And if you're already technological, ooh, it's a great time to be making records. I mean, the access to the, to the playing field is unlimited right now. Anybody can make a great record right now. Anybody. Not everybody will. But it's a great time to be making records and the technology and IK Multimedia is one of those companies that exemplifies that. So we'll see you next time.